hotel to the tourism industry in Transylvania to have all these murders. Is there a tourism industry in Transylvania? Well, we have our beautiful forests and meadows. And last year's cheese tasting contest attracted over seven people. Over seven people? It attracted eight people, okay? And all eight of them work at the cheese factory here in Transylvania. So we have no actual tourists in Transylvania? Well, no. Well, look on the bright side. If we have no tourists, and all these murders shouldn't uh, have any effect on our tourism industry. Look, all I'm suggesting is since you're the veterinarian in charge, maybe you could call the deaths accidental instead of murder. It wouldn't look so bad. Hey, I'm under a lot of pressure here. You want the murders to be accidents, David Odema wants to use them for publicity, and I'm not even mentioning the hassle I'm getting from Inspector Idiot. Chief Inspector Idiot! He keeps asking to examine the bodies himself. So why don't you let him? I can't find them. You can't find them? Yeah, I left them by the door with my keys, but they're not there. Did you look in the car? In the car, under the bed, behind the couch? I can't find them anywhere. Well, I wouldn't let Chief Inspector Idiot know that if I were you. Do you know the penalty for losing evidence in a murder case in Transylvania? No. Neither do I, but I'm sure the Chief Inspector does. Okay, I need all locals to clear the shop, please. We're setting up for scene 21. Actors, to your places, please. All tourist authority directors and veterinarians, please clear the set now. Do you think she's talking to us? I'm not a tourist authority director. I'm not a veterinarian. Ivan Hu and Marcus Von Welby, clear the set. I will clear the set as soon as Mr. Strongman arrives. I only take my orders from the director. Well, I'm the director now, pal, and I'm ordering you to clear off. What happened to Mr. Strongman? He's suffering from work-related stress anxiety. He's scared to come to the set because he thinks he might be next. Good. I'd better go be sure he's comfortable. Do you think he'd like some Perrier? Maybe he needs some medical attention. Patients under stress are twice as likely to choke on the bed you know. Everything look okay normal? I'm the director now. Call me Miss Desmond. Fine. Everything look okay, Miss Desmond? Maxine, you'd be moving stuff like in the set here. Just like move stuff to okay. that way, yeah. A little okay. to the left. No, my left. Stop. Perfect. Now, where are my actors? I'm sorry, I was practicing carrying the tray. Yeah, nice work. Leading lady still in makeup. Lacey Donahue, report to the set immediately, or I'll have the Perrier removed from your trailer. She's good. Okay, now remember, Mr. Dimwit is now playing the role of the waiter. Uh, me no understand. How can you be producer of movie and also play big part like waiter? The waiter isn't a big part. He's only got one line. Me always say no small parts, only small actors. Look, if Robert De Niro can produce an act, I can produce an act. Uh, me no Robert De Niro. Me work with Robert De Niro. You know Robert De Niro. I miss my yes man. Places for scene 21, people. This is the scene where Blondie gets help from the famous Egyptologist. Um, I'm not sure I can pronounce Egyptologist. You just did. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure I'll mispronounce it unless somebody puts the Perrier back in my trailer. I'll take care of that for you, Miss Donahue. Perrier and roses coming right up. Um, I'm allergic to roses. Stinging nettles, then. They're the national flower of Transylvania. Can we please get on with it? We're doing this in one take, people, so get it right. C21, take one. Action. Is it true that you are Angus McPherson, the great Egyptologist? You pronounce that word very well. It's the period. Yes, me, Angus McPherson from Egypt. Isn't McPherson sort of an unusual name for an Egyptian? My family half Egyptian, half Scottish. Which half are you? Me half man, half scientific experiment. <laughs> um, that's not supposed to be the line. Just go with it, we're still rolling. Well, Angus, may I call you Angus? So long as you don't call me late for dinner. Angus, is it true that you are the world's foremost expert on mummies? Yes, me study mummies since me child living with me mummy. You lived with a mummy? Of course, you know lived with your mummy. Well, tiny little problem. You see, apparently I look like the ancient princess, Duwa Diddy. Princess Duwa Diddy, very beautiful. Oh, I thank you. Not look much like you. Right. Well, anyway, the mummy
Tommy seems to think I look like this ancient princess, and he wants to make me take me back to the grave with him. That problem. Yes, and not only that, but the werewolf tore off all the mummies, well, all his wrapping, so now we can't recognize him. That problem, too. Yes, Angus dear, I know it's a problem. At least you have no vampires in your room. As a matter of fact, I do have vampires in my room, two or three at night. But right now, I want to know what I should do about the mummy. Well, first problem solved easy. Mummy think you look like princess, so you wear disguise. You don't really expect me to wear these, do you? I've got my reputation to worry about. From what I've heard, wearing those would improve your reputation. We're still rolling. So, what do I do about the second problem? You mean vampires? No, the vampires are the third problem. I mean, how am I going to recognize the mummy when he's unwrapped? Chances good mummy still have on some wrapping. What makes you say that? Werewolf no have opposable thumbs make it hard to unwrap mummy. So you think I should look out for someone who's not quite unwrapped? That's what me think. And what should I do if I see him? Good idea to run away screaming. No napkin, madam. This certainly is a large napkin. That no napkin. That mummy wrapping. Ah! Time to run away screaming. Check, please. Cut and print. Beautiful, folks. Very nice work. Take five, everybody. Did you see, Maxine? Nobody got murdered. Did someone say murder? Sorry, Chief Inspector, but there's been no murder this time. You see, Chief Inspector, it's not so hard to remember. While I'm in charge, no one will be <coughs> murdered on my set. I'm afraid, madam, that I am not so quick to believe you after what has been happening on your film. But I'm telling you, there hasn't been another murder. You're sure? Quite sure. Murder! Ah, uh, you see? You are wrong, madam. I just said no one would be murdered on my set. I'm afraid Miss Donahue has been murdered. Dun, dun, dun! It's horrible. One moment she was sipping on her berry, berry egg and chatting with the producer in her trailer. She has a trailer? No, but she doesn't know that. Anyway, the next moment she was on the floor, dead! And the next moment there was dramatic music like dun, this. Dun, dun, dun! Aha, dramatic music. It must have been another murder. I suppose she might have just fainted. Or decided very suddenly to take a nap. Nonsense. I have been a police investigator for over a week now, and there is one thing I have learned in all that time. Is that dramatic music equals murder. Dun dun dun! I think I'll get out of here while I'm still alive. Mm. Fear not, everyone. I have arrived. Who sent for you? David O'Will. David O'Dimwick called me. He told me that Lacey Donahue needs her distemper shot. I'm afraid it's a bit late for a distemper shot. Why? Did she bite somebody? To be, I have to say, I'm not surprised, judging by the way she's been acting. She didn't bite anybody. Well, that's good. She died. Oh, uh, that's not so good. It was horrible. We found her in her trailer in a, in a pool of Perrier. Do you think you could examine the body for us? As long as she's had her rabies shot, I don't see why not. But where's Inspector Idiot? I am Chief Inspector Idiot, and I am avoiding the dramatic music. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, I see what you mean. You better take me to the body before this music hurts the body. Right this way. And then you guys all follow that way. Okay, good.